Hello everybody, welcome back to How to Tankar. Today, we're going to be teaching you about the basics, the bare basics of battle. I'll be using a plundering guild deck, in which the next video will be to teach you how to use said deck. But, without further ado, let us go on with the battle. Cheers. Oops. Now, as stated previously, we will be showing you how to battle. So, let's make a representation of that, shall we? You, when you you can open up your menu either using the watch or using the X button or the B button, apologies, and then you can choose your selection of decks that you see in front of you. I will be using the Plundering Guild starting deck. I'll show you showcase this in battle with you now. Because that is not for today's subject. So. So starting out, you can see what your hand is. You can either choose to redraw to get all these cards minus one of a different variety, or you can accept and play the game. I'm going to choose to accept here. Now starting out, you can notice that you draw a card at the start of your turn. If it is the first turn, you do not draw a card. You have the mana here, which starts at 1, and then you get one more max mana at the start of every turn. This caps out at 10 mana. This is your health. The health is 30, and you can regen it with a various amount of cards. But once it hits 0, the game is over and you have lost. If you look over here, because I'm not sure you can see it on my side, this is the deck. At oh, you can? All right. So this right here, this is the deck. At the start of every single one of your turns, you draw a card from here. This has everything that you've made a deck so far. This holds the power to your gameplay. This is the graveyard. When minions die or spells are used, they are placed here. And other cards can take stuff from the graveyard, utilize the graveyard, etc. There are some cards, and this is the banished zone. When cards are banished, they are no longer usable for the rest of the game, with one exception. That being the Eternal Ethereal Light, which we will go over in a future video. But anything that's placed here will be done for the rest of the game. This is the Hourglass, and as you can see, my time is about to run out. It'll be his turn in just a moment. Now you can see that it is his turn. You have a total of a minute and a half to do your entire turn. You have that time to place down cards... Utilize your, utilize your spells and take out their minions or push forward your minions that you place down. Coins are That is very true, my friend. As you can notice, there every single card in the entire Plundering Guild faction has the enhanced feature, except for two of them, which we will go over in a later video. But as you can see here, now that I have two mana, I can now use a utilization of all of my cards here. I'll be using the Pickpocket of Tomero, which, on entrance, gives me two coins, but it also takes two coins to use its enhanced ability. So the main idea of this card is to place down a stronger type minion while being able to get your coins back or placing it down unpowered with just the coin. But now you can notice I have the ability, because he was rushed, I can put him forward, which sends him into the defending phase after I end my turn, which will be now. And flip the hourglass. When, when a creature has amped, it can be pushed forward the first turn it is played. Otherwise, it will be exhausted. If a creature is exhausted and then given amp at a later time, they will not be exhausted after they attack. But now I can give you an accurate representation of a spell. I will be using the spell Dead or Alive. This does two damage to a creature, and if it dies, I gain two coins. This is mainly used for taking out weaker minions, 
for a stockpile of coins at the start of the game. Which I showed you right there. But that card that he just used had a special attribute called last word. This last word specifically, when it dies, that's what a last word is. When it dies, it'll, it'll uh, uh, perform that ability. Then, the ability itself, it differs from card to card. But, for this card specifically, when it dies, it copies a random card from your opponent's hand. Very useful for seeing what they may have or what they may use against you. Seeing as that, because he just took it from my own hand. Now, I'm going to end my turn and let him have his turn now. He chooses to play Daring Swindler once more, because he got another one. Then he chooses to kill my Daring Swindler with the same spell I used to kill his. This is a Grave Robber. As I stated earlier from the graveyard, whatever card I take from... whatever Whenever I place this down, I can take a random card from his graveyard. He only has three cards in there, but it can be useful in certain situations. If I enhance it for two coins... I can choose what I wish to take. Hey, that actually looks pretty nice. I'll take that one. And now I took the dead or alive in which I can use against his daring swindler once more. Now I may end my turn. Hey, you called it, my friend. That is the Wandering Executioner. It deals damage based on whatever its attack power is. Usually, it is two attack power, and you can enhance it to give it four attack power. Useful for taking down solid minions, but not the most powerful. These are neutral cards. They usually hold no effect, but they are very good in most situations. Filler minions, defenders, or attackers. I placed down two there. They don't do anything, but they have a solid amount of attack and health. Therefore, useful for defense. I will now end my turn. That grave robber I was talking about earlier, I took it from him, but I only copied it. I didn't steal it. So, because I copied it, he has it himself, and now he can place one of, down one of my cards, in which he took the pickpocket of Tomero. Probably shouldn't have chosen that deck, man. That's like, this is like outside of our scope right now. It's like auto order, man. It's like. Oh. All right, yeah. So, I cannot see what this card is, but the camera can. So, uh, while it is just a question mark to me, it's not to you. I have yet to know what card that is. That is a contract card. Contract cards are used for a condition, for a powerful effect. If that condition is met, it will continue doing its effect whenever it so pleases, or whatever the card entails, until the effect is no longer active. That is a contract card from Augur Order. This is a regular Oralist healer. This is an entrance card. As when it is placed down, it'll do the effect that it states, in which case gives me one health. Very useful for just a little bit of health. You know, you never know when you might need that a little extra health. This is a fireball. This deals damage based on its mana cost, which is by base 4, and deals half that damage to the adjacent minions. Adjacent means next to. When placing down the fireball, ah, that would have killed that him. If I threw it at this guy, it would have dealt 4 damage to him, killed him, dealt the 2 damage to the guy on the side of him, and killed him. But he played a card called Breach of Terms, which, when placed down, will prevent any from me, will prevent me from placing down any spell, and then get rid of the contract card. That is what breach terms is. I can now end my turn without worry. Uh, it seems as though he's fighting fire with fire, eh? Now, because he threw it at the middle guy, it killed two of my guys but left the stronger one alive. But now he has the minion advantage. If he were to push, he would be dealing damage to me no matter what. If he pushes all three, I have a secured, I will be taking six damage here. Which, this early into the game, only six mana, is not too great. 
but we still persist nevertheless. This card is a weapons carrier. When I when I place him down, it gives every single card in my hand one extra health. But if I upgrade him for one coin, I get all of these guys get one extra damage, which can be very powerful in a lot of cases. Notice how all of these guys are more powerful now? I can place down this guy now, which instead of being a 5-3, it is now a 6-3. Very strong minion. Can take down mostly anyone, but is fragile in his own self. Yeah, that was a solid basics of the Plundering Guild. Now, normally you'd want to defend this here, but because of how strong this man is, it wouldn't be the most smart to defend that. Even though you're taking a lot of damage, remember, health is a resource. In most cases. Notice how I placed these two down? These guys have a ranged effect, which means when they're attacking, they attack first. Unless if they're met with another ranged minion in which they attack at the same time like normal combat. But with these guys specifically, when they get a kill, two random cards in my hand will gain one plus one, which means whenever it kills a minion, I gain whatever two cards in my hand, if they're both minions, they will both gain one plus one. If you have more than that, it is randomly chosen. He placed a card called Garnan. Garnan the Trading Prince. Garnan the Trading Prince is an extremely good card that whenever he whenever he whenever I draw a card, he gains one health. And that has the activate feature. Whenever you hit a card with activate on top of its head, you get to activate that special effect. In which case for Garnan, you get to draw yourself an extra card which is very useful. Now, in this case, I'll be taking heavy damage here, so it would be more smart to sacrifice a minion than to waste all of my health. In which case, we are taking out a, a, a what is it, cautious hunting party, which, when placed down, summons a token copy of itself, which is just nothing. Now, I will be taking the damage here, because keep in mind, if they full push against you, you can make that same push right back at them. Like so. This is Paladin of Orlis, the most expensive upgradable card in the Plundering Guild arsenal. When upgraded, it'll remove until end of turn, which the effect of the card is give armored to three friendly creatures until end of turn. What armored is when they are pushed forward, they do not take damage the first time they are attacked. Other than after that, they do. Now, if I were to upgrade him and place him down, he has Ant, as we told earlier. But now I get to give three of my friends free effects. I get to deal 6 damage, 10 damage, 15 damage, and 20 damage. Unless he decides to block with Garanan. But Garanan is such a powerful card, it is almost never worth to defend it with him unless he's going to survive it himself. That was Phil Swift. That was... You dare desecrate his name? You dare desecrate his name. Now, as you can tell here, I have I made sure to place down another minion so that way I still had defenders for when he inevitably pushes himself. But he places the card called Fireball, which takes out the three minions I buffed, which removes my chances of winning by a heavy chance. But now, I must defend, and I do not have a lot to defend with. This would be here. Let me win this. So, I'm going to have to defend the two strongest ones, because if I don't, I'll be taking too much damage than I can handle. This is all I could take down. I am now at 2 health, but I can place down other minions to help my chances even more. 
I now have three defenders to defend against his minions. If you were to full push, I can defend the three that are needed. But he only pushes forward two of them, which allows me to take out one of them using the stronger creature. Keep in mind, one armored does not defend the minion if it is blocking. It only defends the minion if it's attacking. I got a card called Jaeger Copy Mage. When I place it down, it copies a random card of my hand once more. This card is not useful in this situation, as I do not have more than one card in my hand. As we see here, I can now push forward or stay back. If I were to push forward, I would die, because I would not have defenders, and he will. Let's not forget, he put up two contract cards that I can't see what they are. But you can. So. Oh, they can't see what they are. My apologies. Okay, well, there are two contract cards on the side there. Contract cards are exclusive to the Augur Order faction, which we'll go over in a later video. Now I must keep to my defenses, or else I shall be felled. But, when he did that, it dealt damage, one damage to all creatures across the board. Which, he failed to realize that that would have killed two of his minions instead. Leaving me at the minion advantage. But, he placed down another one, which allows me to slay them. But, he placed down dead or alive, and upgraded them. Which, allows it to deal more damage. Now, I must defend against this. And I must choose one of my minions to get rid of. Now, knowing everything, choose what you think I should defend with. The Brutus Executioner, or the Paladin of Orlis. Keep in mind the Brutus Executioner has Death Blow, but this has one-man army. What would I choose? The answer is the Brutus Executioner. As, if you recall earlier... Armor does not defend you from when you attack with it. It only defends when you attack with it. Damn it, I said the same thing twice. Doesn't matter. It doesn't do it when it, you defend with it. But now you can see I have a useful case for Jaeger Compu Mage. If I were to place it down, I could get another Gate Guardian, which allows me to place down more defense. Now, there is a certain kind of deck called Infinite Jaeger Compu Mage. We will go over that in a later video, and we will bring in a special guest to help us explain that. But now, if I attack with this guy, he's going to have to throw away a minion to defend it. Uh, or, if he wanted to kill it, he'd have to throw both minions at it. But now you can see that I have an advantage in minions, but he has the advantage in cards. Now, what you may think, the card advantage is infinitely more powerful than the minion advantage. Because the card advantage can get rid of our minions and allow him to attack. See? He just got rid of majority of my minions. And if he were to push forward the missionary vanguard, I'd have to defend it or else I'll die. And dying is not something you really want to do in this game. Because, you know, you lose the game because of it. But it seems as though my road shall end here. I only bought God's butts a dead or alive. Which he blocked with Breach of Terms, which, as we stated earlier, nullifies any spell thrown. You can kill me. But now, because I have no defenders, nor cards, nor the health to take it, I have lost this game, therefore ending my win streak of zero. And not to mention, every loss is a learning experience. Don't forget, you can learn from every loss. Unless you really couldn't have done anything. Then, then you really can't learn from it. But otherwise, you can learn from every single loss. This has been the basics of the battlefield. We hope you have learned a lot from this video. And we hope you have learned the bare basics. Hope you have a good day, my friend.
Cheers.